Hey, welcome back to The Road to Inspire. I'm your host, Shanice, and I have a special guest. Sean. <laughs> and this is my husband. For those of you who don't know, we just recently came back from a trip to New York. And let me just say this. You have to give New York his props because New York is the most least expensive vacation that I have ever taken. Mm. And it proves that time and time again. Number one, the one thing in New York that you don't have to worry about is getting an Uber because <laughs> you can take the subway for $2 and I think it's 75 cents. Yep. And that's what we did. We pretty much went from Times Square to the Bronx to, no, to Brooklyn, mm -hmm. then to Harlem. Um, we did all this stuff on the subway. Yep. One of the things that we did is we took the Harlem tour and that was the Harlem civil rights tour. And we did that through um, Harlem heritage tours and that's in Harlem. Um, I'll put a link to that in the show notes as well. So if you are gonna be in Harlem anytime soon, the cost of it was only $30 and it was like an hour and a half. We were a little bit late because we got lost, mm -hmm. um, but we, we did visit the inside of the Apollo, which was fun and had the chance to rub on the log. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we seen uh, <coughs> actually a bunch of, um, a couple different, well, we seen a lot of places. Our tour guide, Neil, was great. He showed us different places where, um, New Jack City was shot. The movie New Jack City was shot as well as... American Gangster. And we got a chance to see that. And he, you know, kind of did reenactments. He was funny about doing a re... This is where that shot was taken. Mm -hmm. You know, where that scene was done. And where... Was it Muhammad? Um, who was it? Where they worshipped or something? Um, oh, Malcolm X. Malcolm X. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he showed us where he went to, you know, where he worshiped at, where that original place was, a jazz band, a jazz um, club called yeah. Minton, M-I-N-T-O-N. Mm -hmm. -N. And I did put some um, photos of that and did a reel on my Instagram. You can follow me over there. Mm -hmm. And it was just a beautiful um, experience. I seen, we got the chance to see Harlem in a different light. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so so many different um so many different aspects of New York that I didn't see previously. I got a chance to see on this trip. And New York is so big and so broad yeah. that you'll never see it all. But the one thing that I do love is um how in these different um how in Harlem how they kept um they kept the name Harlem even though somebody there were developers that tried to come in and um gentrify it yeah. and call it like a new soho in harlem like Saha or something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and they wasn't having it they had to take them people but this is what they had to do they had to take people to court i mean they put in a lot of work and i'm gonna share um some clips and some videos yeah. on that trip um but it was amazing and we ran into even while we were doing the tour we ran into um, different people. And these were people that our tour guide, Neil knew, um, that lived in the community and how they called each other. Um, hey, auntie, hey, nephew. Mm -hmm. And they didn't, they didn't really, they weren't real relatives, but because they knew each other from the block, from the community, um, only African-American people, only black people know that <laughs> because mm -hmm. that's, what, that's, what, that's how it used to be. You know, growing up, you know, this person was my auntie because they looked after me and make sure that I did what my mama told me or what my grandmama right, told me right. to do. Um, oh, you ain't supposed to be doing all that and yada yada. <laughs> and so he had so many of those people, it seemed like, that he knew within the community and that knew him. And even you, when you were talking to, we were late for the tour. And when we arrived there, the guy said, there was a guy standing outside, an older gentleman, maybe old enough to be your uncle. Yep. Mm -hmm. And he yeah. was like, what did yeah. he say? He's like, oh, y'all here for the tour? He just left. Yeah. Yeah. But then me and him had a great talk. It was like I was talking to somebody in my family. Yeah. You know what I mean? We talked about, you know, the difference between now and then, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. uh, up north and, and, and where they, in New York and Wisconsin. So it was, a, it was like you felt like you were received there. Yeah. 
you know, like people embraced you, yep. you know, and that was the cold thing. And sometimes we don't see that aspect on TV. Yeah. You know, we see all the things that they want you to see, but the experience from my perspective is that, man, New York is, it's, it's a warm place, not just climate wise, I'm saying, but it's a warm place. People are, you know, they do them, but they, they allow you to, you know, flow in. Yeah. And I, what I got when I was, when we got to Harlem and just when we stepped foot on our block, it was like, man, like, oh, we got home. It's like <laughs> you got your, and any black person to know, like when you in the midst, you know, it's people that you don't really know, know, but it's like, oh, we family. Mm -hmm. And that's what it felt like in Harlem. It was like, oh, we family. We cool. Because you seen that everybody looked like you. Right. You know, every when everybody looked like you, it's just different. Mm -hmm. it, it really is different. And even, you know, just talking to different people, you know, the communication, it was just an easy flow. And not saying that it wasn't th that way throughout New York, but it's a different vibe. It's a different energy when you get amongst people that look like you. Mm -hmm. And Harlan had that vibe, that energy, like, oh, you just came home. Oh, girl, mm -hmm. you know, even when we went to the Caribbean place, <laughs> that right. lady gave you so much food. Gave so much food for the real. <laughs> yeah, gave, they gave us, you know, and it was really good. Some really good, I think it was called Caribbean Star. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I showed that too on uh, one of the reels on my Instagram. But what was one of the things that surprised you about New York Psh, in general? They selling weed on the corner. You know, it was it was so amazing. I, it's probably legal there, like uh, like I, I assume it would be, because you see the police down the street and you see a man with a booth with a bag of. I'm like, yeah, is this for real? You know, so that was amazing just to see the people out there just selling marijuana like that, and they sell in there all kind of forms. She offered us a brownie with it and everything and then you walk down the street and that's all you smell half of the time like whoa for real in times so, yeah, square was, it was lit yeah so that literal lit yeah that was a surprise that was amazing to me as well and it was a, it, and the thing is you know it's a lot of police officers they had you know they had the weed truck mm -hmm. the marijuana truck yep. and then they had you know just in different areas uh they had the marijuana vendors where they had their table set up, <laughs> yeah. they playing their little music, la 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 la, and then, yeah. you know you want to buy some weed because I had to take a picture of one of them. So I'm like, she for real, Damn like for selling real. these Rice Krispie treats that got marijuana in them. Yeah, and so like it's just a common thing. Like that's that whole vibe over there. Yeah, with that mm -hmm. marijuana. That marijuana, it was it was interesting. But also another thing that surprised me is like the the mixture of diversity. Not just a lot of people there. But how we all intermingle and we was, you know, not feeling some type of way about each other. You know, I know Times Square is a touristy place, but I'm talking about we had people from all over the world. Even in our group, we had people yeah. from Germany. Yeah. In our Harlem group. And UK. You know, and the UK. And it was like everybody was cool with each other. Mm -hmm. Everybody was cool and everybody was just doing their thing. And, you know, uh, New York is an aggressive place, but it's still personable. You know, people was doing them, moving fast, doing this, but it was still interaction. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, and I, I was like, man, I never saw New York like that. I never been though, but you don't see that type of aspect until you get there, you know? So it was a really, really good trip and I liked it. You even bought a CD from a new artist. Oh, yeah. I kind of got played on that. I bought a CD from a guy on the street to support him and he ended up having one song. And it was a whole bunch of other tracks on there, and they kept skipping and went back to the first song. But hey, that was a New York experience. I got caught up in the New York experience, and I spent a little money on something, you know. So it was interesting. <laughs> yeah. And so with that, you'll see, and that's the thing with Times Square too. You'll see. I mean, New York has a different kind of hustle. Okay, mm -hmm. like realistically, to compare New York and Milwaukee, mm -hmm. right. we sat down sat down because mm -hmm. <laughs> New York got a different kind of hustle and y'all wouldn't be able to hang yeah. because when when they out there they out just like in Chinatown Chinatown was what really took you out huh yeah. <laughs> it wore New York experience wore us out he yeah. had never been this was my third time going but you know they even had old grandma grandmothers Look like they would be grandmothers out there selling the purses, yeah. selling the handbags. Now, I love it. I love to haggle. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> um, and I didn't even buy nothing. Yeah. I didn't buy nothing, but I like the whole experiences mm -hmm. of going to Chinatown and going to different places. And um, yeah, it was fun. It to was me. fun. It was fun. <laughs> That 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 Chinatown is so fun. It's so funny because you know you see the different people trying to hustle and this and that, but you also see just like funny stuff going on. Like, man, did that just really happen? You know what I mean? So it was just interesting. But that trip, that walking, that walking was something because you we walking all around these different places and stuff like that. I'm like, man, you know. So yeah, that Chinatown experience was it was it was nice. It was real nice. It was really fun. And Chinatown has, I say for me, Chinatown has changed a little bit with how it was when opposed to when I was there in March 2020, when the pandemic first hit. I felt that I had more deals. I felt that the price, some of the prices were cheaper. Mm. Now, granted, when you, there's still people um, selling stuff on the Brooklyn Bridge, like these says. Um, so there's still that. And you can still find some good deals, but I felt like in some of the stores, and that's why I would just go in weird stores just right, to see, right. like, I'm like, it was just amazing how high the price was, mm. you know, I'm like, I don't think it was this high before. <laughs> um, but it, it, I mean, I understand that price goes up. Yeah. We're in a different time. We're in a different season. Um, we not in 2020 or 2019 no more. So I do understand that. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't know that the walking affected you so much that you were so tired though because yeah. I had to buy me some new shoes. Mm -hmm. And I and I'm a walker. Shanice a walker too. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, I'm ready for this. But it's just so I think like I keep going back to the I think it's the aggressiveness of what you're walking. If you get on the sidewalk and the light is changing, you gotta go. You know what I mean? <laughs> you gotta go and people are always moving and stuff like that. So you can't just casually walk there. No. You know, I'm a casual walker. I get to walk in, especially in New York. I'm looking up and seeing things. But if I don't be be aggressive enough, Shanice is way up there and there's twenty people in between you. So you got so you gotta you gotta be on it. You gotta be, you know, pay attention if people not paying attention. So you just gotta you know, that was the whole thing with the walking there, the aggressiveness of it. And we and with New York too, I'm a pretty much when I when I get there, um, and I'll probably remember this more so and thing, I know that things change too. So you can have one method when you, you know, you can have, you can't have some outdated version of this is the route that I took before because things do change, construction, et cetera, et cetera. Um, when we arrived, it was Easter Sunday and the bus was free Easter Sunday. So we took the Q70 to the num to the subway and the subway we train we took was seven. And so with, that um, we didn't spend much money. We got a card and we filled it up to eleven dollars, I think, and fifty cent each, eleven fifty each, um, and that covered our transportation. And we only had to do pay for like one more, one yep. more ride, and that was pretty much it. So maybe twenty six, twenty seven dollars. As far as transportation goes, that's the one thing that makes New York one of the cheapest tri trips. Is because you don't have to worry about transportation. You will do a lot of walking. It depends on where you want to go, how far you want to go, and how fast you want to get there, et cetera, et cetera. We had four days, three nights. Mm -hmm. From and day. Yeah, four days, three nights, Sunday, Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, and then we left on Wednesday. Yeah. So we had a lot of ground to cover, and mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure that I cover all that ground. My feet were hurting <laughs> so bad. I had to buy some new shoes. That's one of the things that I do always in New York is buy something. Mm -hmm. um, my shopping experience there has been nothing short of amazing <laughs> um, because I do find good deals. Mm -hmm. um, and even you found some good deals yep. there in New York. So yep. yeah, I say the shopping experience is definitely worth it. Um, we always find good deals, good quality. Good you quality know, we shop, went to the yeah. Nike store. He found some Nikes. I found some Nike boots. Yeah. Um, good deals. Some deals. I mean, some balance. Yeah, balances, new yeah. balance. Yeah, yep, seventy dollars for the new balance. They were. Yep. I wanted those, and he wanted mine. <laughs> so I just didn't want to spend seventy dollars for them because I didn't plan on buying new shoes. However, yeah, however. Mm -hmm. the trip per had allowed me to buy 
new shoes for sure because it was necessary at the time mm -hmm. the other thing the most expensive thing you would say that we paid for was food you know and it's sometimes it's not because we had to in a sense but we tried new things we tried different mm -hmm. things and when you are, are living in a, in a small in a hotel type you don't have like you can't buy groceries and cook so you gotta buy food mm -hmm. you know and plus all the walking we was doing we was we were hungry yeah but you know the food itself wasn't very very always expensive certain restaurants but you know what i mean we tried different things and we probably spent the most money just just on the food yeah and we did that's where we spent the most of our money on food the good thing is and this is something that you could take into account too is we were at a hotel where they offered breakfast and it's yeah. just not continental breakfast where you get a muffin and an apple yeah. and some juice i mean they had a full spread they had sausage and eggs and waffles and pancakes yep. and fruit and mm -hmm. juice and oatmeal and you know they had everything that you needed and we stayed at the Hampton Inn in Times Square Central mm -hmm. so um and then the one thing about New York hotels I will say this they're tiny <laughs> everything they're tiny. there is like they they're everything short on is space. up yeah everything is upward you know yeah. it's short on space you got everything is jam packed yeah, and we we stayed in the King Suite, mm -hmm. I think I want to say. Mm. Um, not not so Swedish, okay? <laughs> it, it really not so wasn't. Kingish. Yeah, <laughs> and it was like, um, but but it was it was nice. It was clean. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't have any problems. I spent a total of one hundred and forty two dollars for four days, three nights, and the reason being is because. I use my points. Yes, no. I love to use my points. <laughs> and one way I can put a link so that you can get an American Express card where you can, it's an American Express Hilton card where you can rack up on points. And what I do is I use my American Express card for everything. And then I pay it off before the bill gets here. So, and usually that's before the 22nd. So I just pay off the bill before the 22nd. And even though the bill is not due until like the first, um, I just pay it off anyway, because that way it's paid off before it hit credit bureaus mm -hmm. to see what that balance is. So I just pay mine off that way. That way I'm getting more bang for my buck. That means this credit card is worth using to me. Um, it's not worth using any credit card to me if I'm not getting no points, if I'm not getting nothing right. out of it, except for spending money. Right. So, that was one of the values that we had is using that card because I had points that covered all of that. And I think it, the hotel cost was maybe $199 a night or mm -hmm. it could have been $142. I, I, no, I think it was about $199 per night. Um, the other thing about New York is this that I noticed that each time I tried to go in the summer, I couldn't go in the summer because the prices of hotels and everything just went all the way up to like $300, 400 mm -hmm. It just went bananas. So I know that if I go next year in the summertime, and this is just something if you're planning a trip, you want to keep an eye on. If you're thinking about going in the summer, please plan well in advance. Um, I know that if we do do the summer of soul, right. we'll probably have to do that way. Like as soon as they get the date, right. it, we'll probably have to reserve rooms or whatever because I know that it's going to be packed. Right. Um, and then too, I know because of the summertime, a lot more tourists in the summertime, mm -hmm. even though Times Square was packed. Right. Do you hear me? And we had, the unfortunate thing is, is that we had just missed KRS-One the day before we got there. We had just missed, what, Jodeci and some other Usher. people. Usher. At the, um, Rockefeller, at the Rockefeller Center. Center skating. So we had just missed all that. However, all things work together for <laughs> our good because we had, we still had an amazing experience. Mm -hmm. um, as far as hope. As far as flights, um, flights are different now. You know, they, they charge you for every single thing. So the one thing with Delta is you can at least get a carry-on. And what our flights were $248 um, for our carry-on for round-trip tickets. And that's $248 each. And we added on, and don't quote me on these, I might be a couple of dollars off. But I think in total it was like $254 per person. So that's a little bit more than I usually spend on flights. However, um, because this was round trip, because we're in a new time and a new season now, um, it was the cheapest that I can find. Um, everybody else, you know, the price was 
just the price without any carry-on bag. You would have had to pay another sixty or hundred dollars mm. for your luggage. So that was one thing. Delta is, was really good about that. Mm -hmm. um, and the cool thing about being at Times Square, um, so I was talking to Shanice about it. It's accessible. You know, we was able to get to Harlem within. 20, 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Yeah. We was able to get you to Bronx, I mean, um, Brooklyn. Yep. You know, so we was able to, to go places on the subway, yeah. you know, and it wasn't like you was on the subway hours and hours. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Times Square was pretty cool. You know, it's always tourists there, but if you want to go out and check some places out, get on that subway and it'll take you where you need to be. Yeah. And the good thing, and the thing about the subway is like when people are coming in from other places, other cities, they may not be familiar with the subway or may not want to take public transit. And the thing about New York is this, from every economical class in background is on the subway, yep. okay? It's not one class. The subway is not for poor people. The subway is for people who want to get there fast without right. driving and dealing with the hassle of traffic, yeah. okay? Every time that I've been to New York, I took the subway. Mm -hmm. Every single time and have never had a problem. Um, yeah. Only problem that I had with the subway is Kind of got some serious smells sometimes, and that was I, that's one thing I was happy about the mask mandate. At points, at least you go get, put the mask on and you don't have to smell all the sub, all the smells. But it was cool. Wasn't nobody doing no crazy stuff on the subway. It's just I guess trying to keep it clean all the time is, is a little harder than you would yeah. think. You know, it is the smell is, and it was <laughs> it was certain ones, and I don't know which ones right. that were stronger than other ones. Yeah. But even still, I mean. They require that you have on a mask if you're going to be getting on the subway anyway. So yeah. that mask is for all of our benefits. <laughs> you don't sure. want that. You don't want to breathe that Definitely in your mouth, like that, yeah. in here. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you don't want that. Mm -hmm. So that was a big plus. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I say that. Um, what was the other thing? Did I miss some, something? Uh, oh, we did go to Dumbo. Um, oh yeah, we mm -hmm. did go to that area. It's more of. I think it, for me, mm -hmm. it wasn't for the food. It wasn't for the food. <laughs> it depends on who you are and who you are watching this, okay? Mm -hmm. But speaking to people who look like us, mm -hmm. you can skip Dumbo, okay? <laughs> I think if you want to get a view of the whole like skyline, maybe at nighttime, that would look really good. <clears throat> excuse me that would look really good i think um but we were there during the day it's a beautiful view to get that whole skyland view you got the brooklyn bridge on one side and i don't know the name of the other bridge on the other side right. um but it's really nice there are some places when you go in the um i don't know the name of the place that we went into uh, where dumbo is you can go inside and there are other restaurants in there too mm -hmm. um which are, I mean, maybe like 18, you probably spend like anywhere, probably like 15 to eight twenty dollars $20 each on the meal. Right. Um, so that's okay. And we did go to Chelsea. Yeah. Chelsea was another place that we went to. We spent, we spent a lot of money in Chelsea yeah. um, just for food. But again, we wanted the whole dining experience mm -hmm. because one of the things about going out to eat, going out to eat in another city, in another place when traveling is... You want to taste the food. Yeah. Um, and the one thing that we didn't want to do is just have a food experience. But we did spend some money at that restaurant in yeah. Chelsea. Mm -hmm. And I'm mad that they mixed <laughs> my rice with right. my curry because I could no longer eat it the next day. It was mush. Mm -hmm. um, we spent about $75 there. Yeah, and that yeah. was, but you love that rice. I love their food. <laughs> Even though I had some kind of reaction to it, I told Shanice, if I even if I have this reaction, I'm eating this stuff. It was pretty good. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. it was. It, it was some good food. Mm -hmm. Um and, and good service too. Yeah, it was. We we got good service every single time. Even at the first restaurant that we were at when we had you had breakfast and I had that salad. Yeah. Again, the pictures are on Instagram. Mm -hmm. You can follow me over there at Shanice Hemp Hill. The link is in the show notes. Um Yeah, it was some good service. Food was good. Yeah, mm -hmm. food was good. So and then um what was the other place? I don't think that there was any other places except for when we, well, we, I did talk about Caribbean Star. Caribbean Star was the Caribbean place we went yeah. to in Harlem. They had really good food, very clean. Um, and they give you a lot of it. 
they do. They do. And it, now that was worth it. I think that was probably the best meal that we had, in mm -hmm. my opinion, as far as my taste buds go. And if you know me, I'm gluten free. I'm dairy free. Um, and that was. And what did I have? I think I had the jerk chicken. Yeah, I had the jerk chicken rice. Yeah, and you had that barbecue chicken too. That barbecue too. chicken too. Yeah. Lots of it. So it it was it was really good, and I also had their their juice. It was something like punch or something. It was yeah. some red punch. But if I would have known, and this is to anybody who goes, if you like any little taste of ginger, or even if you're unfamiliar with ginger, right. they did have the juice in the bottle, and it's called Sorrel Ginger. S O R R E L. I didn't realize that until after I had already purchased the mm. fountain drink. Mm -hmm. which was super duper sweet super sweet yeah <laughs> so it just depends on your taste buds but i'm telling you that sorrel ginger is the best and i know that because i had it here in milwaukee and i paid five dollars <laughs> for that 16 ounce drink mm -hmm. and whenever if you can tell me where to get that from it's by grace <laughs> and it's sorrel ginger um i know that it comes from the caribbean but if you can tell me where to get that from we can be friends. I would really, really appreciate that because I don't want to pay $5 per bottle. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, let me see. And hopefully I can get Neil on here who did the Harlem tour for us. I'm telling you, for me, the Harlem tour changed my life mm -hmm. because it really inspired me and it really empowered me at the same time because I seen that it was still people, um, trying to protect our history and trying to advocate and still pretty much in the civil rights movement. Yeah. Realistically, they were still in the civil rights movement. And you'll see in the video um, that I'll post later, one of the ladies, we, again, we had ran into other people that Neil knew and this lady, she was a part, she was on the, one of the housing committee committees for her um, building, which mm -hmm. was the same building where New Jack City was shot at. Right. And they said that that place used to be infested with heroin and drug addicts. It used to be really bad. And man, it's just such a beautiful place now. Yep. It's such a beautiful place. So I'll share that with you. Anything else you have? Just go. Go to New York if you get a chance. Beautiful place. Yeah. Beautiful place. Beautiful experience. Thank you again for joining me. Any information that you need is in the show notes. Um, as well as my how to grab the bag in crypto. If you haven't grabbed that bag, I'm showing you how the link is in the show notes. Um, simple course that will walk you through how to start, um, getting into cryptocurrency. I'm a buy and hold person. I do not trade. So if you're a trader, don't put that in my chat. Don't <laughs> put that in the comments. Thank you so much. I'm a buy and hold person. I'm teaching you how to buy and hold safely. Simple course, $22. Again, the link is in the show notes. Thank you again for joining me. Until next time.